Hey guys, what's going on? Kevin Cage back with another daily cryptocurrency video. Welcome to the channel. Like and sub if you like what you see and let's get right into the information today. Got to catch up after a long weekend. So first things first, Stephen Diep just sharing a video clip again. This was at the technology talk on July 18th, 2019. And this is Anthony Lewis here on the left of R3. And we have Mr. Sagar Sabhai. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And he is from Ripple. Um, I know we've heard him speak in the past as well. And they're talking about R3, how, ex you know, explaining how R3's open sourced blockchain platform Corda works and through interledger protocol they can actually settle payments on the XRP ledger. So now this is truly truly confirmed. This is not speculation. Now the real question though is how much money and you know how much volume will we actually see when these payments are truly settled? So basically in this video, you know, they go on to explain Corda Settler. That's an interoperability tool that allows them to create and complete all kinds of financial obligations on the platform itself. And for example, this could be IOU transactions. So it connects right to Ripple's test net, which is open sourced as well, and settles via XRP, the digital asset that you me and many other people are talking about and invested into for the long term and it settles xrp from one account to the another and when it's settled corda gets a notification that the obligation has now been paid and they are good to go so again there's different types of interoperabilities depending on what you want to achieve as well different types of blockchain use cases in cigar from ripple he goes on to say you know there's going to be many blockchains and many payment networks that are going to achieve some adoption there's not going to be one that rules them all in his opinion perhaps he's just being conservative but he believes it's all about connecting these blockchains the blockchains these you know currencies and using the right interoperability protocol which he believes interledger the interledger protocol ilp is best positioned and again they believe xrp is the best asset to be transacted on this still per you know chris larson david schwartz stephan thomas they're all saying this this is not just me with confirmation bias this is fact so again um, even on this clip, I am Legion. This is David Rudder, CEO of R3. And keep in mind, R3 is massive, 300 plus you know, customers, large, top tier banks. Like we're talking tier one banks. All right. And just talking about B2B transactions, any business on the quarter network can allow two businesses or corporations to seamlessly transact and in real time. This is revolutionary, guys. The progress we've seen in terms of blockchain adoption is massive. Now we are waiting for the value to actually reflect, reflect into cryptocurrency. All right, right here, Stuart underscore XRP. Ripple did get a new site upgrade. And again, he's just pointing out this quote. And I like this quote as well. This is the right here. Uh, Stephen Reef, and he's head of corporate strategy at MoneyGram International. So just to check this quote, and again, on-demand liquidity, better known as ODL. So we've leveraged on-demand liquidity on RippleNet, and they're referring to use, utilizing XRP on XRapid, which is the software product, to dramatically reduce our operational costs and process global payments at unprecedented speeds. Keep in mind, guys, we already know this, but MoneyGram is the second largest payment transfer service company in the world. For somebody to say this, it's going to get attention. So keep that in mind. I'm excited to see the quarterly report and see that, you know, the actual results, because I know they didn't put too much volume into it right away. You always have to dip, you know, your toe in the water, test it, see how profitable, how secure, how reliable, how transparent, you know, see the benefits. And then eventually, as they've already said, the CEO, Alex Holmes of MoneyGram, has said that they plan to ramp up X Rapid by end of year in the production and to various corridors as well. Now, I'm just curious, how aggressive are they going to implement this? Is this something they really want to ramp up to take over some of the market share and, you know, come try to get closer to first place where Western Union resides? I'm not sure, but we will see in due time. Next, I am Legion just sharing this. This is a video clip of R3. This is in the 19th. So again, just talking about <clears throat> basically, you know, blockchain spending and investment investments in the future are expected to rise to closer to 16 billion by 2023. R3's open source blockchain Corda. It's integrated directly with Swift's GPI. For those of you that don't know, Swift GPI, it's you know, all based on messaging standards and bank payment processing. This is like RTP real time payments, making it quick, cost effective to adapt to the new, you know, the new normal um, standards of today. And through GPI, which is Swift's product or, you know, software, they basically just want banks to enhance, you know, fast evolving international payments payments, not settlement, by delivering immediate value end-to-end. -end. So it comes with, you know, it's secure, trackable, transparent with end-to-end -end payments. And XRP, remember, 
is the chosen settlement mechanism on Corda's platform. So we will have to keep this in mind. I'll continue the dollar cost average and try to keep a level head during all of this. Try not to over speculate and over hype. But you have to connect the dots because Swift GPI, excuse me, is really no different than, you know, X current or any other software products. It's fancy credit, credit and debiting, but it does not help these settlements end on the fundamental hierarchy where central banks need to settle their currency. It's not helping the pre-funded accounts. It's not removing the dormant capital, you know, banks, payment providers, financial institutions still have to pay heavy capital costs, inflation, you know, all of these basically terrible you know costs that hit them year in you know year in and year out and this is what x rapid is solving to resolve or searching to resolve excuse me all right we're going to finish off with this this is really cool um actually one more so right here just wanted to tweet this alex cobb just pointing out you know ea with five point you know whatever five plus five million plus followers talking about investing crypto and he just said they just proved that if a large corporation tweets about crypto cryptocurrency that they can get a ton of free exposure on social media let's watch other companies do the same and i agree i mean let's continue just to watch the power of network effects unfold we are so early and I just want to emphasize that. Keep in mind, Bact just went live. They're all testing the waters, seeing if it's profitable, seeing if it makes sense. And again, I think that, you know, this is really going to set the scene for the coming months as well. All right, this is where I want to finish off. This is interesting. If you are not a conspiracy theorist, that is fine. Because again, when you do tons of research, it begins to make sense. So the IMF by I am Legion. So as we can see here, this is the rise of digital money and fintech notes so we get some clips here from i am legion now let's just pay attention to this now none of this is financial advice but i personally believe as time goes on especially with the fed pumping all this money and the things that are going on in terms of political geopolitical tensions and economic turmoil that we're seeing i personally believe that it is very very possible if not likely that the 40 49 billion xrp in escrow that is locked up has been already pre-purchased by another governmental authority or you know some form of overseer a government authority or overseer maybe the imf the world bank maybe some central banks who knows but what i'm believing is they do not want a single fintech like ripple to be you know a true monopoly so let's just take a peek really quick um so as we can see here and i'm just going to read this part and then the next i'll just give you some cliff notes because this is so relevant so what if providing a level playing field also meant offering settlement services to e-money meaning electronic money providers what if these firms could also hold central bank reserves just like the large banks so to the extent and they satisfied certain criteria and agreed to be supervised the suggestion is not new in fact some central banks such as the reserve bank of in india we know their connections to ripple as well the hong kong monetary authority and the swiss national bank already offer special purpose licenses that allow non-bank fintech firms to hold reserve balances subject to an approval process remember that picture of brad garlinghouse sitting next i believe it was right next to the um, hong kong monitor monetary authority as well and then of course christine lagarde when she was at the imf so subject to an approval process the bank of england we know their connections is discussing such prospects meanwhile china has gone even further the central bank requires the country's large payment providers alipay and wechat pay to hold client funds at the central bank in the form of reserves despite these examples many of the details of the proposal to allow e-money providers to access central bank reserves would have to be worked out the ability to hold central bank reserves would fill the sales of e-money providers by allowing them to overcome market risk and liquidity risk keywords right there and would transform these into narrow banks narrow as opposed to fractional banks are financial institutions that cover 100 percent of their liabilities with central bank reserves and do not lend to the private sector they merely facilitate payments and as we can see right here let's go to these pictures really quick so basically these points there's a few points so there's a few benefits to consider from offering this e-money providers by offering e-money providers access to central bank reserves or potent, potentially requiring e-money providers to do so so first it's ensuring stability of money they you know they talk about this it can be you know currently trust in electronic money it can be shaken by default market liquidity and fx risks as well as potential over issuance relative to banking and client funds so there's a lot of risk that goes along with that so it ensures stability 
Next, they basically could ensure interoperability of the payments and also protect, protect the consumers from e-money monopolies offering payments to a huge, large network of users. All right. Another point, actually, central banks and regulators might not be able to contain the growth of these large money monopolies. And we've already heard this concern. We've heard a lot of FUD regarding this as well. And these could be large insert international firms operating as you know nearly natural monopolies, given the importance of network effects. International firms, I can think of one, perhaps Ripple per se, with about 220 clients working with 40 to 50, um, 40 to 50 countries of course but 40 to 50 central banks so over 40 countries and 40 to 50 central banks excuse me I had to get my figures correct and in that case central banks might want to give preference to domestic e-money providers operating under their direct supervision by offering them the means to issue money that is perfectly safe and liquid and thus potentially more attractive than the foreign offering all right fourth monetary policy transmission could be more effective um let's see um, and then lastly, I just want to talk about this too, is, you know, central banks could establish clear conditions to grant licenses to these e-money providers, including strict supervision and oversight by the central bank or other authority. So maybe Ripple's not just working with them, but perhaps the IMF, the World Bank, the BIS, they all just want to keep a very, very close eye on what is going on for their own interests. All right. Do you really think they're just... It's, I mean, it's all about monetary policy. It's all about control, period. It's not about us, the little guys. We're just simply riding a wave, in my opinion. But it's time for a reset some way. Will it just be happening on the back end and everyday people like you and I won't even be aware of it? Who knows? I'm not sure. But with the Fed pumping all the way up till what, October 10th in whatever, 70 plus billion a day? That's absurd. That is a massive amount of money to be put into a market. And I don't think we're really grasping that yet. So something is going on and something will happen by end of year. Now, will this be XRP's price skyrocketing? I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is, economically speaking, something is going to hit the fan and people are going to be looking for safe havens. One way or another, perhaps it's just a minor recession, it's no big deal, or it could be a very severe depression. So I'm just saying, hedge your bets. Do not put your, all your money into crypto. I mean, this is not financial advice, but I do not you know, advise that per se. But just keep an eye on the markets and be ready for anything. Have exit plans, be ready to take profit, and just keep in mind what's happening even in the precious metals market because time will tell. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Um, there's no dumb questions. Feel free to ask away. Um, let's just try to be, you know, provide constructive criticism and let me know why this is wrong or this is right. And I'll see you in the next video.